Hey, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of the GSAP library. So that said, let's get started. GSAP stands for GreenSock Animation Platform, created by the GreenSock team. It's one of the best web animation libraries, if it's not the best. If you look for a crazy fast and performant animation library, a library that is armed with a tremendous amount of features to help you achieve beautiful animation, no matter how complex it could be. A library that is compatible with every browser and with various frameworks and libraries. A library that can almost animate every single property of an element. A lightweight and expandable library and not dependent on any other third-party tools like jQuery. Well, then GSAP must be your choice. GSAP is basically a suite of four major tools, plus extra plugins. Tween Light, the lightweight core of the engine which animates any property of any object. It can be expanded using optional plugins. Tween Max, includes a package of features without the need to import them one by one. Tween Light included. Timeline Light, a sequencing tool, making it simple to control entire groups of animations and precisely manage relative timing. Timeline Max, same as Timeline Light, but with more features. Plugins, as I mentioned before, a variety of plugins can be added to these four tools to add extra features. The first step to use GSAP is to include it to the project files. To do so, we can download the files using npm or simply use a CDN hosted version, which what I'll be doing in this tutorial. I'll get the Twinlights link because that's what I'm going to work with for now. Then get the link to the CSS plugin which is crucial for Twinlight to work. That should be enough to start creating animation on a web page. A tween in GSAP is similar to keyframes in CSS. You just create an animation, then add it to an element. So, to create a tween, we can do it in three different ways. The first way is using new to create a new instance from tween light. The second way is almost the same, but without the new keyword. And then there is the third way, which is the simplest and most commonly used. Now, let's talk about the different elements of this line of code. Element is literally the element that we want to animate. It can be a simple variable or constant. It can be an array of elements that we want to animate all together or an odd list. The second argument, which is duration, represents the duration of the animation. Vars 
is an object that contains the different properties that we want to change over the duration. It also holds different other properties on callback functions. Ok, let's start by animating an element on the page. First of, let's declare a constant that contains the first square. The element to animate is square 1. The animation takes 1 second. Most of the properties to animate in the VARS object are CSS properties except that we use the camel case style to type their names. Some properties though don't have the same name like some of the transform values. In this case, I'm going to translate the square on the y axis. To do that, I just need to type only y and give it a value. By default, the unit of measurement is pixels, but we still can explicitly specify what unit we want to use by using a string instead of an integer. In the case of percentage, we can also use the y% percent property. Speaking of opacity, there is a property that is exclusive to GSAP, which is the auto alpha, which is composed of two CSS properties, opacity and visibility. Now, let's dive into the different methods. The first one is 2. This method sets the values of the properties in the VARS object as the final state of the element that we want to animate. The second method is set, which is almost the same as the previous one, except that it changes the different properties instantly. That's why we need to get rid of the duration. We can do the same using the 2 method by setting the duration to 0. From is the reverse of to. This method sets the values of the properties on the VARS object as the initial state of the element that we want to animate. Lastly, we have the from to method, which is a combination of the from and to methods. With that in mind, we need two objects which represent the initial and the final states of the element. As I mentioned before, we can animate different elements within a single tween. Let's say we want to animate the first and the third squares. To do that, I just need to put both of the elements inside an array and pass it as an argument to the tween.
Same thing goes with node lists. Animating all the elements that have the same class is pretty easy. Now, let's take a look at few of the var's properties. The first one is ease, which is the timing function. We can use different values going from power 0, which is the less intense, to power 4, which is the most intense. We can use different easing functions, including custom ones, but I'll keep that in a future video, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification to not miss it. OnStart is a very useful property which takes a function that triggers before the animation start. There is also uncomplete, which triggers a function right after the end of the animation. You can discover a lot of other functions including the delay property which delays the animation for a certain amount of time. Check the documentation at the link in the description. Up until now, we have set the same values to the elements properties. However, we can give random numbers using a function that returns a value specific for every single element. We can also use a function to give each element of the node list's items a value depending on its index in the node list by using the index argument of the function. The index has the element's index in the node list starting the count from zero, so the first element of the node list has zero as index. If you are wondering why I added 1 to the index, well, as I just mentioned, the index of the first element is 0, so whatever I multiply by it, the function will return 0, which means the first square will move 0 pixels from what it has been before the animation. Now it's time to take a look into the twin max part, so let's start by adding it. TweenMax includes TweenLite and CSS plugin, so we can get rid of their CDN links. As you can see, I can still use TweenLite after I deleted its link in the HTML file because it's included in TweenMax.
Tween Max has three additional methods over Tween Lite. The first one is Stagger 2, which is similar to the two method, except that this one animates each of the elements in the node list after a certain delay that we can specify in the Stagger property inside of the Vars object. The second additional method is the stagger from, which is the reverse of the stagger to method, meaning that the values of the properties and the vars object are the initial state of the element. The third additional method is stagger from to, which is the combination of the two previous methods. Let's see some additional VARS properties provided by TweenMax. The first one is Repeat, which you can use to specify how many times the animation can take place. You can use a positive number to specify how many repetitions can take place. Or just use negative one to make an infinite number of repetitions. The next property is YoYo, which makes the animation goes from the initial state to the final one, and vice versa. Another property which can be used only with the stagger methods is Cycle. This property takes an object that holds the different properties we want to animate. Then, these properties take arrays as values. Each array has to contain one or more values that can be repeated over the different elements. In other words, we are creating a pattern with the array values. This should be enough for this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification, do not miss any of the upcoming videos, and see you in the next one.